Welcome to my channel. I'm the itemization expert and consultant, and I help top lobals and high elo players take their itemization strategy to the next level. In fact, this gameplay is from my friend, a top global chow known as Ecstasy. Now, without further ado, let's get into the itemization tutorial. Brute Force Breastplate may not as durable as our other items, but its extra movement speed bonus can be useful for micro. Immortality is not a recommended early game item as it only offers plus 20 armor, and its passive has a long 210 second cooldown. Additionally, due to its lack of durability, you may be susceptible to dying again before the passive becomes available again. Instead, consider buying these components. Steel Leg Plates, Dreadnought Armor and Magic Resist Cloak. They may be cheap, but they provide excellent durability. Radiant Armor. Let me clear up a common misconception about this item and Glowing Wand. They do not counter each other, particularly in terms of their passives. I'll explain more on this later. Athena Shield, it provides solid magic resistance against burst damage, but not the best option against continuous magic damage. Thuff Boots, this item with its unique passive which reduces crowd control duration, is S tier. It's a must-have item in pretty much every single game. Its magic resistance is also very important to prevent any possible nasty Negbin damage from mage assassin type heroes. You can also buy one or two magic resist cloaks to completely nullify their Negbin. Don't underestimate magic resist cloak just because of its cheap price. Here's how efficient its magic resistance is in relation to its price. Notice how the magic resist cloak towers all over the other magic resistance. The item's passives are not included in this chart. However even then magic resist cloak is still king. Anticurus is a good counter item against physical spellcasters like Benedetta, Lapu Lapu, Arlet, etc. It also indirectly counters hybrid heroes that use both physical and magic stats. Dominance Ice, if we are facing regen dependent heroes. Blade Armor is ideal against basic attack reliant heroes, particularly those who are crit dependent. The slowing effect can come in handy to help us escape. Guardian Helmet, its regen is good for recovering and maintaining HP, it's an ideal counter to poke type heroes and strategy. As a tank, you should avoid investing in damage items and prioritize defensive items since you only have a limited amount of gold. However, if your teammates neglect to clear minion waves, you might need to consider purchasing Cursed Helmet. Regarding Glowing Wand, its new passive works like True Damage, which means it ignores magic resistance. It counters any form of magic resistance, and not specifically Radiant Armor and its stacks. However, Athena's passive can reduce the damage of Glowing Wand's new passive, so it is not a real true damage that can ignore all forms of damage reduction. I have itemization tutorials featuring top globals and high elo players. If they can learn from me, so can you. Staying up to date with the latest content is important, so make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications. If you like Chow Thunderfist skin, here's how you can obtain it. And a quick shout out to Ruby Ruby Ruby. If you want to learn about the physical item's cost efficiency come check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope these tips help you achieve more win streaks in your games.